ミダブツ、ナモアミダブツ、ナモアミダブツ、ナマンダス、ナマンダス、ナマンダス、ナマンダス、ナマンダス、ナマンダス。Those who feel that their own birth is completely settled should, mindful of the Buddha's benevolence, hold the Nembutsu in their hearts and say it to respond in gratitude to that benevolence with the wish. May there be peace in the world and may the Buddha's teaching spread. Namo Amida Buts. 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 Good evening, everyone.、Uh, we're gathered here on the last day of the year、uh, 2020.、Uh, there are many things to reflect on this past、uh, year.、Um, there are many、uh, ways we can describe this year、uh, and to put it in a very Kind of all encompassing way. I think for me,、uh, 2020 was a year of sobriety.、Uh, I think it was in February. I was in Seattle preparing for the National Council meeting involving our religious organization, the Buddhist Churches of America, the BCA,、uh, who was convening in, in Renton、uh, in Seattle to meet for our annual conference. And it was right around this time,、uh, which was、uh, early February, where we started to hear about some new virus that was kind of making its way into the United States,、uh, Seattle to be exact. And in the city of Kent,、uh, a few ed- elderly people、uh, passed away from a new virus, right? And, and that virus was to become the coronavirus or COVID 19.、Uh, and soon after this event,、uh, I came down with an illness. And it, was,、uh, it turned out to be the flu, but it was a really bad case of the flu. Uh, but you know, I, there was a period where I thought I might have、uh, contracted the disease. Uh, uh,、um, but, and, I, and oddly enough, I thought maybe if I could make it through this, then you know, I would be in the clear after that. But、uh, it turned out not to be、uh, COVID 19. But、uh, anyway, then as the weeks passed、uh, and we started to see more and more people getting infected, it became more and more apparent、uh, that this illness wasn't leaving anytime soon. And the entire world seemed to shut down、uh, in the month of March, and no one really kind of no one really knew what to do. And it's right around this time that we started hearing about a computer app、uh, called Zoom, in which people were communicating with each other.、Uh, and we started to see that in being separated from each other, we realized just how much we actually really need each other.、Uh, we're social creatures, and we need to kind of vent or socialize or. Mingle or interact with other people in order to feel human again. And I'm sure many of you have your thoughts about this year.、Uh, this year brought about many scares, maybe anxieties, perhaps even sadness over a loss of a loved one or, or someone you knew who died from the illness.、Uh, we felt frustration from not being able to carry out our daily activities and living our quote unquote normal lives. Or we felt Stressed out from the change in our living patterns.、Uh, we felt lonely, maybe, from not being able to spend time with those we love or care for. And we have to see each other through these screens, right? And that's how we have to communicate in, in a way that we weren't previously used to. In recent months, I had a few health issues come up that forced me to kind of rethink. My daily lifestyle,、uh, such as the amount of physical activity I do、uh, and, and, or lack thereof, and the things that I eat on a daily basis. And so I was forced to kind of rethink about how I,、uh, how I should be living. And in, in the, this pandemic, i s much the same way. It's forcing every one of us to kind of rethink the way we are living. To us Buddhists, We know that this entire universe operates on the principle of interdepen- interdependency. And through the pandemic, we see the truth of this principle in real time. We see how our actions affect the communities that we live in. We see how much we rely on healthcare workers, grocery store clerks, garbage disposal resp- workers, the people who provide our homes with running water and electricity, etc., etc. All of our lives are interconnected in a web so vast and complicated that we cannot even begin to understand. Just how much our lives are interwoven with everyone else's. This pandemic teaches us we are all in this together. Our choice of wearing masks or not is not a matter of our individual freedoms being impinged. It's、uh, us wearing masks is a, our way of contributing to a society where we look after one another. And when we look at the、uh, Japanese kanji、uh, for Chinese character for shito, 
uh, it is written as such, and it means person or people, right? Uh, and in other words, there this this the 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 computerized form is not really written uh, to make my point clear, but it, it should be leaning against two sticks, kind of leaning against each other, right? And so, just to show you again, you see how the two sides are kind of leaning against each other. And so, in other words. There are two sticks leaning on one another, and a person cannot be uh, a person based on one's own power. A person can only truly become human when one realizes all of the causes and conditions and the people that were involved in enabling that person to live. And to take this a step further, when one awakens to the understanding of true reality, the world of Amida Buddha's great compassion, one is able to tap into the life source that embraces each and every one of us. When one awakens to this understanding, the world of universal oneness, one ironically establishes his or her own unique self. In other words, when I receive the truth of the Buddha Dharma, I am now able to see the kanji hito as it is. I now realize just how much I am being nurtured by everyone and everything around me. And this makes me become a true and authentic hito. Okay. So the Buddha taught that human life is like the following allegory. Suppose there is a man who has committed a crime and is running away, right? Some guards are following him. So he tries to hide himself by descending into a well uh, by means of some vines that are growing. So he he climbs down the, the, the well through the vines and he holds onto these vines for dear life. And as he descends, he sees vipers at the bottom. When he looks down below, he sees vipers, snakes, uh, poisonous snakes uh, at the bottom of the well. And so he decides to cling to the vine for safety. And after a time when his arms are getting tired, he notices two mice at the top, one uh, that is white and one that is black. Uh, they're gnawing at the vine. Okay, they're chewing away at the vine. If the vine breaks, he will fall to the, to the vipers and perish. And suddenly, on looking upwards, he also notices just above that he sees a beehive, which occasion, occasionally drops uh, uh, some honey that is dripping honey, and he gets to eat that. And so the man, forgetting all this danger, tastes the honey with delight. So from this story, the man means the one who is born to suffer and dies alone. The guards and vipers refer to the body with all its desires. Vines means the continuity of human life. And two mice, one white and the other black, refer to the duration of time, days and nights, and the passing years. So they're gnawing away at the vine. And the honey in the story indicates the physical pleasures that beguiles the suffering of the passing years. So it, it, it kind of masks the suffering that is taking place. So what the Buddha is trying to say here is that life is precarious, it is fragile. There are so many factors that can lead us to suffering. At the same time, there are many pleasures that mask the true state of the affairs that we're in. It's a wonder actually how we even make it out of this life. What the pandemic has taught me was the need to rethink why we are living here in this life. What is this life for? Why do we have to live in a world where there are so many unsettling things that occur, such as disease, natural disasters like the fires here in California, political unrest, racial injustice, and the list goes on and on. The pandemic teaches me that, uh, that it is all the more reason why Buddhism and the teaching of Amida Buddha's great compassion is relevant to our times now. We need a teaching that tells us about human egocentricity. We need a teaching that tells us that despite our many imperfections, we are still embraced in the world of true reality. We need a teaching that shows us and enables us to become our spiritually authentic selves. This is the teaching of Namo Amida Buddha. 2020 has been a sobering year because it shows us the fragility of human life and that in this day and age where AI and technology have made our lives very comfortable and convenient to live, nevertheless, we still need spiritual guidance that will help us navigate in this ever difficult maze of life. And so with that, please join me in Gusho as 
we reflect on the Buddha Dharma. Thank you very much. Those who feel that their own birth is completely settled should, mindful of the Buddha's benevolence, hold the Nimbutsa in their hearts and say it to respond in gratitude to that benevolence with the wish, may there be peace in the world and may the Buddha's teaching spread. Namo Amida Uts. 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 Thank you very much. えー、両下門。もろもろの造業雑種、自力の心を振り捨てて、一心に阿弥陀如来、我らが今度の一大事の御唱を助けそうらへと頼み申してそうろう。頼む一年の時、往生一条を助け事情と存じ、この上の正明は、ご恩奉者と存じ、喜び申し候ろう。この恩断り、弔問申し分け候ろうこと。ご解散承認、ご出世のご恩、次第相乗の前時式の朝からざるご関係のご恩と、ありがたく存じ候ろう。この上は、定めを課せられる恩を着て、一号限り守り申すべく候。生んだ、生んだ、生んだ、生んだ、生んだ。